Well, it finally happened, guys. I am in the market for a new laptop because my previous one, my Blade Stealth 2018, decided to off itself. Quite literally, I was sitting in a job interview. I was interviewing, I'm not quitting, don't worry. I was sitting in a job interview and did it just boot up? <laughs> Video cancel. No, that's fine. The issue isn't actually that it won't turn on. The issue is that I can't charge it. Just to clarify that statement a little bit, I plug in my charging cable and it goes, something's shorting, something's wrong with it. It is time for a replacement. So we have assembled a flock, a herd, pride, murder, whatever it is, a bunch of laptops to determine which will be my new daily driver. And there's gonna be quite a few considerations. Screen's gonna be a major factor. I type fast and I type a lot. Battery, form factor, and of course, I would love to have IO that I can actually use. Although it should be noted that I do always carry a dongle because I have just Embrace that dongle life and my dongle's not on me because I'm actually using it for a review that I was working on, but trust me, I, I almost always carry a dongle. So in front of me are the five candidates. Let's find out which one gets the cheap and expired chocolate rose. 2016, this thing was best before. Speaking of best before, my Segway thing has gotten pretty stale now, hasn't it? But I'm gonna keep doing it anyway. This video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallet is the sleek way to keep your wallet bulged down with its compact frame and RFID blocking inner plates. Use offer code LTTJULY to get 10% off and free worldwide shipping. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun and I'm actually really looking forward to it. So of the five Ultrabooks in front of me, some of them we paid for, but some of them were submitted by the manufacturers. Thing is, I don't know which was which. So if I pick one that we paid for, then I'm gonna go with that and ultimately I'll be buying a notebook for the first time in a while. And if I pick something the manufacturer provided, we'll send the other ones back for a refund. But we did it this way to ensure that I wouldn't be able to have any bias as I'm making a selection. Another thing that, uh, this was actually the idea of one of our new writers, was evaluating without actually knowing which device I'm using. So this is my first time standing here in front of this, and I guess apparently they snuck a MacBook in there. So uh, this is a MacBook of some sort. Like, what's, what's the challenge? Do I just sit down and start trying to type something? Wow, those are not very pronounced home row nipples. Oh, wait, there they are, okay. I really like this keyboard. I did struggle with the backspace, but I think part of it might have been the duvetine on my hand, so I'm not gonna hold that against it too hard. I'm gonna give this keyboard an eight and a half, nine out of 10. I really like it. This is already a different style of keycaps that I do not necessarily prefer. Accuracy on this one is not bad, but it feels a little bit slower. It's got those kind of borderless square keycaps. Um, this one's like a seven and a half for me. I think I already know what I think of this one, but. Okay. I had the same feedback that I had about this before. I feel like it's really easy to fire off quick bursts, but as soon as I try to type a longer sentence, I really struggle to keep up on it for some reason. Those short keystrokes really don't work well for me. Ooh, these have kind of a, it's a long travel, but kind of an empty feeling travel. The really long keystrokes make double characters a little bit tougher on this one, and my, my weaker fingers, my ring and my pinky fingers, struggle a little bit. It's okay, seven. It's probably the worst one so far. I like this one too. I think it's between, uh, this is an eight and a half for sure. And then, which one was the, oops. Oh, I kind of saw which one that was, whoops. So keyboard test is pretty clear to me. This one and this one stand above the crowd. This one is shortly behind. This is shortly behind that. And this is honestly probably somewhere in this territory as well for me because I do do a lot of sort of short bursty typing as I'm thinking, you know, go, 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 go. Now our content consumption test might end up telling me even more that I need to know about these things because at this point in time, I would have a hard time switching to something without a touch screen. So this one has one. That's good to know. I would describe the speakers as okay. It's not nearly as oversaturated as contestants two and especially four are, but 
it doesn't look as good as the MacBook. So the ones on the end, I'd say are the closest to the MacBook with these two trailing behind. Yeah, you can see there's a lot of green in the water here. Oh right, it's a MacBook. <laughs> Derp. Speakers are sort of samey across the board so far. Touchscreen, good, good. This is the worst offender as far as the oversaturation goes. Honestly, this one's speakers sound like they're doing a bit of weird tuning. It's a little harsh sounding. As far as content consumption goes, it's clearly the ones at the end or the MacBook. I mean, you can calibrate the display, but I want the one that is as neutral and accurate as possible out of the box. I know for a fact, Brandon wouldn't shoot anything that looks like that. So with that out of the way, the next part of the challenge is apparently for me to find out exactly what all of the notebooks are and identify them. So that's definitely a MacBook Air. Oh, shoot. Okay. Well, I saw that one. So I'm gonna guess the one with the good display but subpar keyboard is an HP Spectre. I don't know who to blame for this poorly calibrated display over here. You know what? I'm gonna throw LG under the bus and I'm gonna guess that that's a Razer Blade Stealth and I don't think there's a Surface Laptop 2 here. Let's find out what's actually back here though. Wow, that was a Surface Laptop 2. Ooh, I gotta say, I don't think its keyboard is as God tier as Alex does. This was an LG Gram. Ooh, LG. I was hoping I was wrong about you. And that's a Blade Stealth. So actually the thing I didn't have was the Spectre X360. I did get the rest of them right though. So the next step is to go through and sort of talk build quality, how they feel, what the IO is like. You know, it totally makes sense that I would have liked the keyboard on the Blade Stealth. As much as Alex might hate this keyboard, I personally really like it. So this one's only got two USB type A's, but that is enough for a keyboard and a thumb drive, which is sort of my typical maximum when I'm traveling. It does have Thunderbolt 3 as well, which means you can either use just a standard Type-C dongle like I already have, or something like an external Thunderbolt GPU. It's got a quad core processor. Razer switched over to Intel networking from Killer Networking, and I'm personally a fan of that move. Overall, the only thing I didn't really like about this from the original review was kind of the, the boxy shape, but I kind of feel now like I might have been a little bit unfair to it because it really doesn't feel that bad in the hand at all. And the touchpad being nice and big like that, I'm a huge fan of that. The RGB backlit keyboard is obviously a nice touch. Actually, wait a minute. This doesn't have dual Thunderbolt, does it? Oh, dang. Oh, that's really nice. Now the Gram's main selling point is the massive 72 watt hour battery. And I've daily driven one of these before and it is really nice basically charging every two or three or maybe four days, depending on how heavily you use it. Something to note about this one, even though we do have the barrel adapter plugged in is that it does charge over the Thunderbolt type C port. So that's a huge plus for me, more than I really thought about before I started this, because it means I can carry a single type C power adapter for my switch, my laptop and my phone while I'm traveling but only a single Thunderbolt port. Ooh, native HDMI out though, full size. That is pretty nice to see, but they're still using an M SATA SSD. There's no discrete graphics like this one. And unlike most of the other contestants, it's using only a 1080p display, which strikes me as a little bit ironic given that LG is the only company here that actually manufactures LCD panels. On the subject of things that it has to make up ground for, the build quality is just not up there with the Razer Blade Stealth. On the subject of build quality, Apple still does it like few others do. This thing is hyper thin, super rigid. I mean, even the screen, it's almost like they have a bunch of experience building tablets, you know, like super thin tablets, super thin phones, you know, that bent once before and they learned their lesson from. The thing that's really hard for me to get over here is the IO. Not having a, even a single type A USB is the kind of thing that can end up really inconvenient for me because maybe I do go out and buy a type C, you know, 
USB thumb drive or something like that, there's still things where I might have to, like uh, a two-factor authentication key, where now I have to go get that and I have to go get a dongle and I'm usually using something like that at a time when it's really inopportune to be slowed down. The other thing that kind of kills the MacBook Air for me is the dual core processor. If they refresh this thing with a quad core CPU, now they got my attention again because the keyboard's not my favorite, but the trackpad is hands down the best out of anything in front of me. So it does have Touch ID built into the power button, something I really liked when I spent time with the last MacBook that I reviewed. But some of the Windows machines here, including the Blade Stealth and our next one, have Windows Hello with Facial ID, and I definitely prefer that. I'd also have to get used to macOS again, but I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world, it's just not my preference. Unless this really blew me away, I, I wasn't gonna go with it. Moving on to the Surface Laptop 2, to Microsoft's credit, magnetic power cords are pretty cool in like a 2008 chic kind of way. But unlike the MagSafe connector, this one you can actually pull the laptop a fair distance with it before it disengages, depending on the angle you're using. So you could actually conceivably pull, pull it off the table <laughs> without it actually coming off. Biometric authentication, it's three by two, which is really nice for productivity. That aspect ratio makes a huge difference. It was far from the worst display and it feels really good in the hand, but it's not as stiff as the others, although I get it because they've got this, you know, soft touch surface here. And it's just, it's really expensive. I just don't think it's really a candidate for me. Now this one was kind of surprising to me when I saw the pricing. So the Dell XPS 13 as equipped has 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of NVMe storage. It's a similar spec CPU to everything else we're looking at here. So if I was going to, you know, do some light photo editing or very, very light video editing or plays a casual Steam game or something on the road, it would perform similarly to anything but the Blade Stealth 4K, which is going to outperform it by about double in games if 3D Mark is anything to go by. A single Thunderbolt port? No, dual Thunderbolt again with another type C on the other side, micro SD and not a single type A, man, it already had one rose. But the pricing, the pricing, the pricing for this guy is really reasonable. And when you consider the build quality, which is, you know what? I seem to remember it being better. It's okay. It's not up there with Apple or Razer in terms of the actual flexibility of it. But I really like the keyboard and I really like the screen. And I really like the price and I really like the look. It's been a long time since I've used a Dell. I actually don't remember the last time I daily drove a Dell. Yes, I do. Wow, my old XPS 12 2 in one. That thing was a tank though. I mean, I've yet to have a Razer laptop last me more than two years and that thing got rained on. I took it apart, dried it out, put it back together and it is still working to this day. Honestly, when it comes to IO and external build quality and looks, there's really no question that has to be the Razer Blade Stealth. It doesn't have a full-size HDMI, which really bums me out a lot, but that's becoming harder and harder to find, so I guess I'm carrying my dongle around anyway, but at least it has a couple Type A's, still has dual Thunderbolt, and it is just plain built more rigidly than the other Windows machines anyway. I wish I had a little bit more time to do this because I'm on my way out the door to go on a trip. So whatever it is, I'm gonna set it up for this trip. I'm going away and that's it. That's gonna live in my backpack, but it's tough. So the Dell config for a similar spec is about $300 less, but when I say similar, I mean similar because the Razer Blade Stealth, it has discrete graphics, which means I'm not going to get as much life out of it, but they don't have Windows Hello facial recognition on this model. Is it a touch sensitive power button? That'll make a big difference to me. It is, it's a fingerprint sensor. See, that's pretty good, but it's not quite, and go. You know what? I've been gaming quite a bit more lately. I'm giving Razer another chance. Don't let me down this time, Razer. Big shout out to Energy for sponsoring this video. The Energy 60C is a small 60 watt power adapter that's able to charge smartphones, iPad Pros, the Nintendo Switch, and even a MacBook. It uses a USB Type-C outlet and with a USB-C to lightning adapter, it can charge an iPhone 10 to up to 50% battery in just 30 minutes. 
It's got overcurrent, overpower, overvoltage, overheating, and even short circuit protection. It's got a foldable plug, meaning it fits perfectly in your pocket or purse, and it's great for travel. And you can get yours today on Amazon at the link below. Use offer code 60C Linus to get 10% off. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like the one I'm wearing. Oh, this hard drive shirt is freaking awesome. So is the stealth hoodie for that matter. And our community forum, which you should totally join. Now I was going to eat this chocolate rose no. as, a, as a laugh um, until I opened it and realized just how fossilized it is. These aren't like some kind of fancy white milk chocolate hybrid. This is milk chocolate. That's terrifying. Eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it.